the internet is has such a concentration of like uh, quote unquote personalities where I think so many so many channels are selling more of the personality than the content. And then you kind of you kind of have all these audiences like blindly following someone just because of their name or you know this brand that they've created. And so like <clears throat> part of me right now is like I, I just like giving the information and them not like having a bias towards like oh he looks like this or I can relate to him because of this or you know he went to this school or blah blah blah. Like I kind of rather leave that stuff open because you know I don't. I don't really want they're not my only my ideas and so I don't want people thinking that you know these this is just the way I think. I want everyone to be able to relate to what I'm saying and it not just be that's his that's his opinion and that's I I have opinions and you like you said you see them mm. sometimes come through. Mm. Um but at the same time I'm not trying to make it opinion only to the point where the only way that you could sum up my work is just by my personal preferences and tastes like I want you to gain something from it too especially if you're especially if you're watching a video where maybe you don't agree with me like I still want to have enough discussion points in there where it shows that I'm very open to the people on the other side of the argument too because we get a lot of those like ranty kind of like you know, um, everyone's a critic type video. So I don't, I like to try to find like the balance between the two. I think that's really beautiful because I feel that we've got quite strong personalities. So at times people won't get the point that we're trying to say because we have such strong, like people might disagree with the way we right. act or the way that we say things. And that, I feel like that what you said is actually really beautiful because it's in a way that like, like of course you probably might want to show a bit of who you are, but the way that you do things, people definitely look at the facts, look at your content, and aren't really astray by anything else that you do. So that's that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of that came. Uh, uh, there are um, a lot of YouTubers who do video essays and other mediums, you know, like films, comic books, and a bunch of cool stuff. You know, where they do just as good a job at me, and sometimes even better. Um, in explaining their their realm of work, but some of the ones that I found myself frustrated with were the ones where I felt like the creator putting their opinion in it actually took away from the content. Mm. And you know, so I just kind of thought to myself, like when I make videos, I want to make sure that I don't do that. I don't want to, you know, I, I I want when I say an opinion, I would like it to be appropriate and for it to like make you think and not necessarily take away from like at the end of the day, I'm trying to show good art to people, and I'm trying to be respectful of it too, and not make the video just about me. And I think you've done that extremely well because who is. You drew parallels to Stanley. Yeah, that's right, Stanley Kub, uh, Kubrick and Kanye West. Mm, yes, and it seems like you're very well versed, kind of in that world. And beforehand, for for me especially, I I didn't know much about Stanley at all. In fact, I probably hadn't heard of him. Um, and so you you continue to draw light to and parallels to music that's well beyond um, what people usually compare the, these artists to and these music mm -hmm. to where does it where does that come from like where did you get this base of knowledge and understanding of music and film um i went i went to film school yeah i thought so yeah um yeah i i feel like it could probably come off pretty easily in the <laughs> way i talked about in the way i talked about kubrick but yeah, yeah, I came. I I went to film school in college. From wait, where are you guys currently? Melbourne, Australia. Hey, represent. Okay, what 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 does college mean in Australia? Uh, university. Okay, college means university. How long is university in Australia? It really differs. It depends on the the, the mm. degree, but typically uh, three four. three to four years. Okay, so that's very similar to to yeah, nice. the USA. Okay, so yeah, so I, I want to say I actually started all of school early. So when I was like five, I was already doing like first grade level work in, by USA standards. Mm -hmm. So I probably should have been doing kindergarten. And that's not because I was smarter. For some reason, my mom was like, we're going to jumpstart him. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, okay, I'll just go along with it. I was always the youngest in all my classes. But I was really into film, and I was actually from a parent, my parents because um, my mom and dad, they were like big movie buffs in, 
you know, 70s and 80s, and, like, that was a great time for movies. Mm. <clears throat> and they were the type, they were definitely the type of couple who um, went to every movie, like, every weekend. And so, like, they were super, super well-versed in that whole era. So when I came around, my mom's like, oh, like, you need to watch The Godfather, oh, you need to watch this or you need to watch that. And it wasn't even so much her trying to, like, school me on, like, what great film is. She's just like, this is what I grew up on, and it was dope. Um, and so, you know, I'm watching these, like, art, you know, more, like, artistic classic films, and I don't even see it that way. But I, then I go to film school because I want to make movies, and I found myself more drawn to talking about film and analyzing it than actually making it. I do still, like, dabble Um in filmmaking and 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 stuff but very very seldomly but i love talking about it and i love seeing i i think movies have a lot of parallels to so many artistic forms because it in and of itself is like this collage of forms it's visual auditory you know you have human uh performance art literal human performance art and there's like and each part like if you take it if you take it separately and 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 analyze it in and of itself has a lot to offer so i know you listen to interviews with kanye and kanye talks about kubrick and he talks about uh fellini and he talks about these people and it's like okay well if he's talking about these people it also means that these people are influencing him like he's not mm. you know he's not like watching he's not he doesn't mention watching a kubrick movie and that doesn't have some sort of impact on his life and so breaking down and trying to see where i could find that influence i found that out or organically i was watching eyes wide shut and i noticed the the piano note that that plays during that really creepy cult scene and i was like that is the exact same timbre of the note in runaway and huh. then i as it, as it kept playing over and over and over again like it does in runaway i was like oh wow this is directly directly from there and then there was just a lot of visual cues and kanye would kind of make allusions to like in i might be reaching out but i'm i'm pretty sure i'm not you know unless kanye himself schools me but in freestyle four there's a part where it open it opens up with kanye saying close eyes see things yeah eyes wide shut you close your eyes and you see things. Huh. You really think there's a parallel there? I really do because he talks about uh, a whole party, like an orgy and all that stuff. And that's oh, yeah. all imagery. That's all imagery from from uh, Eyes Wide Shut. And when he's like, why don't we do it on this dinner table? There is literally a scene with of girl of, of, you know, not to be too graphic, but of girls doing it on a dinner table. So it's like That's he was sweet. definitely he definitely had to have been like watching it during the sessions or something. Yeah, because we know Kanye's he he I th I've heard himself in some form not only loving film but loving pornography. Have you heard the similar thing as well? Uh, yes, yes, I do remember him uh, talking about pornography. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but how much of this is organic for you and how much of it is research because it sounds like a lot of it is just what you grew up on that you've seen naturally through your own interest through your fam your parents kind of instilling it on you hey watch this look at this listen to this and how much of it is mm -hmm. you know you having to do research to make these videos and see these comparisons uh it's about 50 50 because i think in my in some ways i don't see it as like some sometimes I'll tell people like, oh yeah, like I came up with that myself, just like matter of factly, and they're like, oh wow, that's amazing, and it's like, it's not really amazing because I've put in the years and I've put in the studies at school, and like I read a lot, uh, and like not not boasting, just truth. I read a whole lot. I read every day. I read everything: articles, long form journalistic pieces, just straight up. I will. I'll, I'm the kid who would read a Wikipedia article from the very top to the very bottom. Damn, man. You know, <laughs> and, you know, and, and I still do that. And so, and I also have, like, a photographic memory. You do? Um, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so I remember everything. Like, on, I, could, I could tell you memories from when I was five, and, like, I can tell you, like, what year it was, and I can tell you where I was 
and how something made me feel feel like yeah, I remember everything. Now you you said that your family has a lot to do with how you love movies. Where does a lot of your music interest come from? Is that inspired by your family as well, or did you develop that yourself? Like, how did you love the music come around as well? Uh, yeah, that's all. That's mostly me. I, I was a rebellious. I grew up in a very, very, very strict. Uh, no, not very true. Uh, in some ways, it was liberal. But musically, musically, it was very strict uh, Christian household. I, 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 I still am a Christian, and I still believe. But it was just, I'm not as strict with myself. Uh, and also, in some ways, they... It was because of my age, you know. It wasn't really because they didn't want me experiencing things. So, you know, they in some ways they were really responsible, and in some ways they think they were more strict. And like, I think sometimes like they were more concerned with like maybe like not liking rap as an actual form, as opposed to like, no, I just don't think you should listen to these songs, you know. But or I don't, th I think you're too young to listen to this album. Whereas, you know back then and i think people are maybe more aware now because of the internet but like you know it was just normal for your parents just to be like oh like 50 cent like that you know that doesn't sound good for my kid i bet none of that music could ever be good for my kid and you know it's a it's a big world i started discovering that there was just a lot of artists that i did relate to and that you know um that really kind of spoke my language and you know and that one was Eminem for some weird reason, so that completely rebelled against everything Man, that they this, thought. The reason he's so big, a lot of people can catch on with him. You know, and it's funny because you know, can I say I really relate? Like I, I didn't do anything that he ever said, and I never thought as crazy, like not in the way that he did, but <clears throat> it was the energy that I could relate to. You know, and uh, the, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the angsty kid, like either you're going to go listen to maybe some punk rock or whatever, or you're going to listen to really extreme rap music. Um, and that, that really captured that energy for me. So I was hooked um, after like really digging into Eminem's discography. Uh, and then that would evolve into Jay-Z. And then I actually wasn't a big fan of, Kanye. I didn't get turned on to Kanye until gradu. I want to say graduation. Like, yeah, it was like it was like the period between graduation and eight oh eight. Like that was like peak Kanye in in the mainstream. That's around the time that I caught wind of him. And then a friend of mine was like, "Hey, you should go and listen to uh, the albums he did with Common B and uh, Finding Forever because you know you'll love it because he does all the beats." And I was like, "What?" And so when I found that out, I was like, oh, okay, he's amazing. Like, all right, he's like at the top of this now because he. I can't believe that he makes these beats. Like, this is incredible. Uh, some like greatest beats I've ever heard, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, so 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 then I, you know, it was my discovery, you know, that got me to that, but uh, to where I am in my current taste as far as hip hop and contemporary music goes. But as far as classic roots, that definitely comes from my parents. And I love listening to Michael Jackson and Sam Cooke. They raised me on Michael Jackson. Mm. Um, they raised me on... Um, so yeah, when I say they were strict about music, they were strict primarily about hip-hop and then like the more newer forms. Like anything that was kind of hot and popping at the moment, they were skeptical of. But, uh, but you know, as what like normal adults do. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it, it was it was really cool and to just like grow up around my dad used to be a dj and right? uh he uh he dj'd the biggest parties he dj'd stevie wonder's birthday party Damn. uh he he met he sat and talked to stevie wonder he he met notorious big he like my dad he, he worked hand in hand with uh mc hammer like at, at his at his peak like my dad's been around Okay, you, um, you gotta, you gotta, we gotta. Okay, now we have to expand on this. Okay, big names. so your father having the opportunity to interact as a DJ with some of the biggest names, um, yeah, in in the era. So, do you photographic memory? You probably do. Do you recall him telling you stories about those moments with those artists? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But they weren't. They're not as crazy. They're actually the 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 part that impressed me the most about my dad wasn't that he met these people. Mm. What impressed me the most about him was how cavalier he was about it. 
and like he he talked about it like it was just an average day he never sounded like he was ever starstruck um so he started to give me this lens into oh my goodness like are you telling me that these are just normal people <laughs> and in that and in that way the story was even cooler to me mm-hmm. cuz it gave me this like I was like oh like cuz he was like talking about like I was like what did you say to to Biggie and he's like I just like walked up to him and I just gave him a handshake and said I like his new music and he said he appreciated it and blah blah blah. And I'm like that's it. And he's like yeah, <laughs> like he's just you know like what do you expect me to do? And yeah. then, and then like that sounded really cool to me. Like oh okay like that's that's awesome. Like that you could just like move in circles like that and just be confident and not you know not give in to the glitz and glam and actually like he sat when he sat down with Stevie Wonder he didn't tell me exactly what they talked about but he said the craziest thing about Stevie was the amount of attention the intentional attention that he would give to the person talking to him mm-hmm. he he my dad said it literally felt like he could see me mm-hmm. and and he said and he just he's like it creeped me out because i just like he you know because he wears the sunglasses and it was just like i swear he was that he could see me uh and that i thought that was an incredible little anecdote uh because I think it like sounds, it just sounds right for Stevie Wonder. You know, it just sounds like he, uh, like he would be that type. Like the energy just comes out. Doesn't matter if his eyes work or not. Um, that was a cool. I, I I can't really. He met um he met Denzel Washington, but like not really. It was like in passing. Okay. And and like think think about it. At this time, like Denzel's like not that big yet. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know the people the like like I said like meeting Stevie and meeting uh, Biggie that's kind of impressive because like no matter what at the time when he would have met them they were a big deal, uh, and yeah he was just like he was really good at DJing he was like he wasn't one who scratched he was um, he was just like really um, well known for like making the perfect mixes and like the songs just blending perfectly together and keep it so like he was like the perfect party dj uh and so like that's why he got like so many gigs and like fun fun fact is you know my dad grew up in in south central la he and he used to promote parties all around town and you know people would kind of compete against each other because everybody was throwing house parties right and um and so, you know, everyone's like passing around, you know, passing out flyers and all this stuff. And, you know, you can imagine that people get like territorial about it. And uh, one of his, you know, I guess you could call him in this context, one of his rivals was Dr. Dre. Come on, bro. Come on. We can't, we can't, be, li- we can't be telling lies on this interview. <laughs> Come on, Don. Not, not lying, not lying. I swear, I swear, wow. I swear. I don't, you know, I, 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 I'm not saying rival in the sense of like I don't think Dr. Dre was out sitting around like, oh man, I just can't wait to like, you know, <laughs> you know, make a bigger party than Donald's dad. Like, <laughs> no, I, it's not. Um, it, it wasn't that crazy, but you know, but he, because you have to remember, like at the same time, my dad and Dr. Dre, they're like the same age, so they grew up in the same, you know, relative count, you know, in the same county and relative neighborhoods together, they were not, they were not celebrities to him. Like these were kids in the neighborhood. So, uh, my dad's one of, uh, Suge Knight went to my dad's high school. Like they, these are like people, you know, to my dad, they were neighbors, (laughs) you know, and to us, they're, they're legends or, or, or villains. Do you sort of feel that, like, yeah. if you get to a stage of, like, meeting a lot of artists and interviewing them, say, perchance, would you want to go around the same way that your dad does? Like, be real, just treat them like just humans and just not get too starstruck by it? Do you see yourself being like that as well? Oh, I, I have I have been. I, I've mm. Me and my dad, I, I walked in my dad's footsteps and I became an industry kid. Uh, and I, I worked in Beverly Hills um, at a very big name agency. I will not say their name. Uh <laughs> And uh, we they represent a lot of a lot of big famous people. Um, and like I've literally had t- like Tyra Banks sit in the same office that I was working in, or like I would I've met I, I've been in the same vicinity of at at a work event as Kanye. 
uh like one time i was i i no lie i was wearing the i feel like kobe shirt it was like the coolest thing ever <laughs> um and and kanye comes out with his with his with his homies and like he like looks and he like sees the shirt i'm wearing and he just kind of like looks for like a couple more seconds and then he just like turns back and keeps it moving it was so great feels good uh, uh yeah, that, yeah that was awesome but yeah you know i i I've, I've met i've met people i'm not gonna like start name dropping all the various people but i've met some you know some some well-known people who are very very talented and uh it's just fun. They are just people, and yeah, I'm the same way. I don't, I don't really get starstruck. I've gotten, st- I've gotten starstruck twice. One time I met the dude. What's his name? The dude who plays Sam in Lord of the Rings. Uh, can't remember his name. Sean, Sean Aston. That's the one. All, yeah. All, yes. Also, Rudy. Uh, like I was a kid when I met him, and like, I like lost. I couldn't talk, and I was. <laughs> And and I was like, oh, I love all the movies. I, I was, you know, and it it wasn't like a work thing. He was like, he was doing like a signing thing somewhere. And like, it's like there, there's a couple moments. Oh, you know who's a great LL Cool J. LL Cool J is a great, very nice man. Like I have to at least say that. I'm not saying that like to name drop. I'm just saying if any of you ever meet LL Cool J by some weird happenstance, oh, like, do. yeah, he's 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 a he's a super nice dude. Uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, you know, I would just be like bragging for no reason if I just kept going down the list. Cause, <laughs> well, that's, just so you because know, some, because some of the people I've met, they're like not even like that famous. So it's like I would just be like sounding dumb. <laughs> well, just as a disclaimer, we should have said this to start. Anything that you don't want in the final cut of this can go out. If you accidentally name drop, if you accidentally say something, oh, I shouldn't have said that. We can take anything out. So don't feel pressured about that. Hopefully. Cool, no problem. Um, um, yeah, no, I, I don't think I said anything incriminating there. I just <laughs> don't want to. I, I just don't want to. I just don't want to. Like you know, let's talk, we, we can talk about music for sure. And that's I want to bring it back. Like, firstly, that's very dope. That actually, I wanted to ask, what was your role in in that uh, agency or wherever you worked? Oh, in those circles, I I, I was a video editor and uh, oh. I did motion graphics. So. Mm. And and I did it for the sake of you know um, showing the best that the various talent that we represented had to offer, um, and so it was like informational videos essentially about you know really relevant um, artists that were killing it out there. So the materials always looked cool when you were sending them out. It's like oh wow because we're working with the best like footage and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was fun. You know, it's think about like if it was what I do sort of without the narration. Mm. And just super, super corporate, <laughs> you know, like, like clear, like clearly, like there's no really artistic uh, soul to this. It's really corporate, but that's essentially what I did. Is there anything in the world that we would have seen that you would have had a hand in creating? Um, I edited. Uh, sorry, hold on. I edited the Miss. It was something from Miss USA, and it's on the internet somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I also did uh, a couple things for for um, a fashion week event called, in, uh, called Made LA. That's where Kanye was at. Okay. Tyler Tyler the Tyler the creator is he uh, debuted his uh, his new like golf golf line uh, there. Yeah, fuck uh, line. Was, some good stuff. Yeah, no, it was cool. I'm actually I got his. Oh shoot! Wow, I totally forgot. Um, you know, he, he did you know about his shoes? Like, like he has the Converse thing, and then yeah. he also has like his own shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, ha- I like, I got those in the mail because I was there. But it's like we straight up had to wait like over a year to get them. Really? Wow! <laughs> so you, they had your details, yeah. and they just sent it to you eventually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, good on them. The, the, he he also sent the Converse ones as like a like to make it up because I didn't order those. Oh, that's dope. So he sent me. T- he sent me two pairs of shoes. That's dope. Yeah, super nice. So yeah, I mean, once again, I think fans should definitely support Tyler because he's definitely one of the artists who's like the. I want to say like he's he's got like that Kanye free spirit, you know, where he's just like does anything and everything that he wants to do, and he does it well. And like those are definitely the type of artists that I love covering because. Like, you can talk about, like, a billion different things. Like, I could, if I wanted to, like, literally make a video just about his clothing line because he's so multifaceted and stuff, and I love that. Especially his production now, man. Like, he's, he's got definitely influence from Pharrell and Kanye, but his last album was mainly produced by him, and he's shaping to be just an oh, amazing yeah. artist, man. Like, 
Yeah, he is. He he's really gone. is. It's, it's be. It's, he's really becoming like. Um, and it's it's cool to see the growth because I think I remember seeing, uh, you know, the earlier projects and like seeing how he began to like produce more and more like proficiently and like it it, it just sounds so much better. There's so many melodies now. Like you're literally, you feel like you're watching like the building of an artist. To take it back to the music, and you described some of the experiences you were growing up identifying with Eminem. Do you remember the earliest experience you had with music? Um, yeah. Uh, memory uh, of music, rather? Per, uh, MC Hammers, you can't touch this. Can you place that us was, there? Like, place us where you were? Can you paint that picture? Like, and what that looked like? I was... <laughs> You guys are going to think I'm a freak. I was two years old. Uh, I was at, I was in Long Beach because that is where my parents lived. Uh, they lived in an apartment in Long Beach at the time. And my, and my dad was, uh, that was, I believe that was around the time that he, my dad began working for MC Hammer. But at the same time, that's not why he was playing it. You, you Can't Touch This was like the biggest song when it oh, came out. Yeah. Like you can't. You cannot understate, like, you or, or or the other way around. Like, it's just you can't believe how huge it was. Even as a as a baby, like, I just this is all I heard. You just heard it keep playing. So you like just knew that this was a big deal because like you went to a party and you heard it. You know, you were at home and mom was playing it. You went to your cousin's house and it. Was, so it was dope. I mean, I I still think that song is dope. But you know, it's just funny how like all his other like corny corniness has like kind of ruined that but it, you know it's still like one of the dopest songs i think of that time in the 90s and mm-hmm. for me that was so i got a little bit of that uh love for the hip hop sort of but not really cuz i didn't really you know that's it wasn't like in its more rebellious form but and then after that a lot of michael a lot of michael jackson mm-hmm. um they um <clears throat> i watch michael i don't know if you have ever seen michael jackson's film moonwalker uh no. but if you haven't if no. you haven't it is what it is one of the greatest movies of all time and i am not lying it's a huge claim uh <laughs> but and, and and you're gonna watch it and be like that's not true but <laughs> the, the, the reason but but the reason why i say it is is because i think it is one of the most artistically free and creative things that i've ever seen uh, that revolves around music, and it's just this mind L- trip, LSD trip, from the mind of Michael Jackson. It's great. Um, think about like Purple Rain, but like probably most likely, mm, I don't want to start a fight. I was gonna say better, but it's just different. It's so different. Um, so those two, like the MC Hammer, was a phase because you know uh, that song could only live for so long. But Michael Jackson was like the core for me growing up. He. Um, he was, if I ever felt like I wanted to listen to undeniably good music, it was going to be Michael Jackson. Um, and I didn't even do that from like a, oh, like I'm, you know, I'm this like six year old pretentious connoisseur. Like, no, like Michael Jackson is the best and it was the best at that time, especially. So, you know, what else are you going to listen to? Uh, and once you're exposed to it, you don't, you don't go back to anything else. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, I was big into bad. Bad was my, f- is my, I flip flop between bad and thriller, but bad might be my favorite, uh, Michael Jackson album. And that was also around the time that dangerous had been out, um, for a little while. And I would watch the music videos for that all the time. So it'd be jam, starring co-starring michael jordan and there was just all these like great videos and that really was like that's kind of you know pre kanye you know that was that he was making michael was making music michael was making films michael was doing what no one else was doing right. so i was watching that i'm like this guy's like a god <laughs> you know right he so was, so yeah that, that was that, go ahead no, yeah, I'm just saying that mentally, you know, that became as the foundation for my taste in music. And then where does, oh, I actually wanted to ask you two questions, but where does then hip-hop come in from there? Like, where's your earliest memory of a hip-hop artist come in? Mm, I, was in I was in church, and there was, like, these Christian rappers, and they were terrible. But, <laughs> but 
<laughs> as a kid, like all I heard was like a pretty. I am pretty sure it was still a really good beat, despite their rap, the rap being terrible. And I like heard of that, and I was just like, I need to whatever that is. Like I need more of that. And I was telling, I straight up told my parents that, like I need something, you know. But I didn't know any artists, so I basically just was saying I need that sound. And they like you know kind of like yeah we'll put we'll you know. You'll forget about that because, of course, at the time, like this is the height of gangster rap. Like, what am, you know? What are they gonna find for me to listen to? So, uh, but I heard, so I knew, like, okay, maybe when I grow older, like, I'll be able to delve into all the stuff. And I was largely uninterested in hip hop for a long time. One because of of the content when you're young and you don't understand why you know there are so many f words or you know or why they're referring to women in this way like there's just certain things that just don't resonate very well (laughs) when you're a kid and uh when i when i uh i remember when i got around to eminem it was even though the content was crazy the way his delivery was just so rhythmic and so on point and the lyricism was always like impressive what like the lyricism was impressive while the flow and delivery still being smooth and like that was like the perfect and then the music the production was so catchy and i was like okay this is the perfect like the perfect storm this is everything i like like it's it's catchy there's like a melody to it at s- somewhere whether it be in the production or in the hook and his rapping is just so on point that it like fills any any like any desire I had for like what a rapper would sound like. Eminem embodied that for me. I also feel like that like you said you rebelled a bit as a kid. I feel like Eminem is a good rapper for people that rebelled when they were younger as well because of the, a lot of the content he talks about as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that that was the fun part. You know, the fun part was like I'm listening to music that my parents don't let me you know listen to, and that in and of itself. When especially because I was with my parents, I was always the good kid, and because I just I I thought logically like okay, especially when I was when I was really little, it's like okay, either I do this or I get spanked, or I do this <laughs> or they don't let, or I do this and they don't let me watch TV for a couple weeks. So like, why would I do these things? <laughs> That's extremely logical you know, like, way to think. You know, it's just, it's just like I want to watch TV. Like why would I give that up? You know, for me it was like getting rid of TV is like you might as well put me in jail. So I was like you, <laughs> I'm not I, I was like I'm not going back in. Like, <laughs> my parents break my Eminem CD and that that like no matter what they do to you like they can't like you know. They look they like, like lock me in my room, like lock windows, take away like everything, but at the end of the day like you can always find ways to listen to music. Right. Well, yeah, that was the thing, and then that was early, early internet. Like I remember, that was early YouTube, like super early YouTube. Dial up when I was getting into that. Uh, I like it had to have been like around YouTube's early years, and like you know, you could you could pull up full songs without them, <laughs> you know, right. pulling it down for copyright because it was so early. Uh, and I listened to a lot of Eminem songs on there, and of course, I'd find the lyrics and I'd read them. Actually, I didn't start listening to Eminem seriously. Until I was reading, of course, like a nerd, I was reading the Wikipedia article about him. And I was like, you know, I started talking about like, oh, and, and like certain teachers use his wordplay as like examples for their students. And I'm like, what? Like, no. Like, that, this doesn't make sense. And then, of course, you know, you start listening to songs like Stan and like all these other deep songs. You're like, oh, wow. OK, he's not only is he a great music artist, like he's a really good writer, too. Um, and I was always into writing as a kid, um, and you know, still am now. I write all of my essays, so uh, that it was just fun to see someone mess with words. And now that I've gotten older, I actually care more about like melody and stuff more. So that kind of is feeding back into like my Michael phase uh, when I was a kid. But yeah, oh, wow, I'm so so many directions we could go. But you sound like you brought up Michael again. Michael passed away when I think he was 50 years old, halfway through yeah. his life. What implications do you think Michael Jackson could have had on the music world, not just hip-hop, but all of the genres we're living in and culture as a whole, if he was still around? Do you ever think about that? Yeah, um, I think that, well, first of all, <clears throat> his This Is It tour would have been the greatest tour ever. Yeah. 
in all time. You know, I don't know if you guys saw the film that. I didn't. Uh, but yeah, right. You did or you did not? I did not. Okay, yeah. Right after he died, he uh, he was going as we, he was going on tour. He was going on his "This Is It" tour, and that's why it felt so ominous when he passed away. Because it's like, like yeah. he kept saying, "Yeah, he kept saying this is it" in yeah. press conferences, and then he dies not too long later. It's like, okay, this feels like an omen. But then, uh, then a documentary film came out that really is like, well, you know, he's dead, but they need. To, they're like, they were like, he needs. We need to see the vision you know of like what this tour would have looked like so it really breaks down like the making of that tour and it goes through like the set list and what the visuals were going to be and how he was going to perform them so it kind of becomes this sad like this is what it could have been like Mm. uh film but at the same time you're like so in awe at like how amazingly put together everything was like that it would have been the greatest tour of all time and be- because obviously, a the moving parts were so beautiful, and then b Michael Jackson was a natural born perfectionist, mm. so everyone would have been been seeing the most amazing show every time. But you know, of course, the tra- tragedies happened. But I I really think that he would have set a new bar performance wise. You know, he wasn't really coming out with that you know with bodies of work anymore. You know, we we get unreleased material here and there, but. You know, but at the time, like for him to have done that tour after that long hiatus, he really would have shown like why he is the legend that he is. And that kind of reminds me of like, you know, like when Kanye did the Yeezus tour, like that tour would have paled in comparison to the This Is It tour if it occurred. You know, so I wish, I really wish. Do you, talking about tours, it's something I wanted to ask you as well. Do you recall, do you have favorite performances that you've been to? Like does does do they, does anything stand uh, out? Kanye at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, performing 808s and Heartbreak from wow, front to back. To that. Oh, yes. Album. Explain that. Like, uh, paint that picture. Like explain the the emotion going through there and and that whole atmosphere. Yeah, it, the Hollywood Bowl was a really good venue for it. I think some of it because of, like, it's a, you know, it's outside and it was in the fall, so it was very cool atmosphere. You know, thankful, thank God it wasn't in the summer because it would have felt miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the way the Hollywood Bowl is nestled into Los Angeles is it's really kind of in the hills, sort of. It's kind of like nestled in the hills, so there's trees that surround it. And it kind of has this sort of like in nature vibe to it. Mm-hmm. So, you, you, I don't know, you, you automatically feel transported because you literally are. And then the music starts playing and it sounds amazing with those acoustics. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I was pretty far back and everything still sounded crystal clear. And um, he had the most amazing thing on stage. He had like this big orb that and it had like three staircases that led to it and the staircases would rotate and like he would have actors come out and Zoe um Zoe Kravitz was there strangely and like she was like like there was so much like Kanye-ness going on um and he had like one of his like usual Yeezy season models like all like painted from gold like in gold from top to bottom on stage with him and she would stand still like a statue and he would just sing to her like crazy kanye stuff and like just amazing and and one of my favorite parts about it was it started say you will started and you hear the you know you hear the 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 classic little beep boop uh 808 sounds and um kanye walks out you know saying the first words and then you realize he's kind of like the vo- volume is getting a little lower. And then all of a sudden he just goes, stop. And everybody stops. And he just goes, start over. And he walks <laughs> off stage. And they, they start the show over from, from the beginning of the beat. And it was amazing. Like, that's when we knew. It was like, oh, we're there. We're here. This is it. This is a Kanye show. Uh, and But the – but. The truly the jaw the awe inspiring part was he performed uh, a special Pinocchio story freestyle, yeah, and it was you know him really talking about his struggles in the industry and him being told that he would never work in Hollywood again, and you know how you know the industry beats down black men and 
all this stuff and you know kind of going back again he's like yeah they told me i wouldn't work in this town but now i'm here at the hollywood bowl two days sold out and he like the way he delivered that was like the most like inspiring thing i had ever heard and like the and the crowd went nuts and it was like it was just great a great moment and I, I went. I actually went to the San Pablo tour twice, uh, but I still like the eight. The eight oh eight. The eight oh eight show is special. Yeah, it's really beautiful seeing you love the film and music come together. Hence, why you're loving artists like Kanye and Michael Jackson because they just do that so flawlessly. Oh yeah, yeah. It just goes. Yeah, it goes from music to visuals, and like that's the way I think. Um, even in like in college and stuff, like the type of visuals I would make were like more abstract but there was always like good music in the background because that's honestly like deep down inside it's a creative it's like all i care about like if it's just like cool visuals and dope music i'm like it could be about anything and i love it uh but obviously i have to make sense to an audience so you know so i will actually what noisy images was meant to be if you scroll down to the very bottom of the noisy images instagram i still have my original posts there Mm. And they're just abstract graphics animated to music. That's what noisy images was. Noisy images was going to be visual art, (laughs) and nothing and nothing more. And somehow it turned into video essays. And now look where you at. (laughs) Yep, very very strange. But yeah, my mind works a lot more abstractly than it may seem. What was that moment you made that shift from uh, these abstract pieces of art to narrating them? They don't know. Um, they don't. They don't know. They don't just know. Just watching a lot of people on YouTube do it well, I I, I felt like I could I could do it too, and like I think thing. I was getting a little bit tired. Like uh, this is a uh, I wanted to do something this to focus because dream. I think sometimes when you're like, I was always doing these cool weird art projects, and I felt like I was accountable to nothing. Food, I'm never finishing them the because I knew they wouldn't really resonate with anybody but me, and so. It just, at a certain point, didn't feel as motivating. I still do things like that, but at the time, it was all I was doing, and it was just, I got tired of it, because I was like, I don't want to be like working on a pet project, passion project that only I care about for like five to ten years, and then get mad when it doesn't get published in a book, or that it doesn't turn into a movie, or whatever, whatever I wanted it to be. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to make stuff that actually is just communicates directly to an audience and i'd always wanted to like do some sort of blog or something and this nothing ever really worked out for me like i didn't find anything that fit what i wanted and i found this and it was a perfect fit because i don't usually i was never um i i would have a hard time staying on task with personal projects like making 50 videos in a year i wouldn't believe you <laughs> like what do you mean like what you know, I learned from working at my other jobs that were very, very tough and very demanding that I could do it. So now I knew I was capable. Then I just needed to become disciplined. And it was easier to become disciplined when I deeply loved it, you know. And, and the funny part is I would tell everybody, even when I was in film school, that I loved music more than film. But for some reason, I felt like I had no future in music because I couldn't sing. I wasn't a good rapper. I would try you know, with friends and stuff, uh, you know, uh, I make beats. I actually produce a lot of the, a lot of the instrumentals that are, um, in the background of my videos. Uh, the, but, but, but I, it's, it's probably taken me a good six months to go from terrible to decent at making beats. So, uh, and, and, and it, and it is a skill that I have, um, built up like, little by little since i was about like seven 18 years old it just like it takes a long time if you're not doing it full time it's a hard thing to learn 100 uh yeah it's a really hard thing to learn but i was totally i was kanye was that for me like i would uh i i do i distinctly remember being in my college years and having like a hard time like i was just so introverted and like uh, and I remember it was like going through a rough time at the time in, in school and I didn't have anything else to do but make beats and that's all I did just made beats and so like when Kanye talks about like what do you know about making five beats a day for three summers <laughs> like that's how that's how I'd spend my summers I, I would just make beats I wasn't selling them though but I just make beats and now I've gotten to a place where I can actually use them so I don't get sued 
uh, by copyright holders. And hopefully one day, I hope to actually one day be a great producer. So that's like the long game. Keep following that dream, man. Oh, yeah. So that's where you... That's the vision. Like, what is the vision for for yourself and this channel as well? How do you see the pro- the producer side of you interacting with this channel and using that as a platform to help yourself put yourself on the map as a producer? Yeah, uh, just, you know, I'm just up front, you know, with my viewers. I'm up front. I, I, I posted on Twitter and actually I only have, I, I don't have uh um, did uh, was that on my end or your end? That's mine. Don't, don't forget <laughs> that. Oh. that don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, I just wondered. I was like, maybe something fell, and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, uh, c- uh, could you remind me where, where was I? On the vision of the channel and how oh, producing yeah. interacts with that. So yeah, it's stuff like producing. It, it, I'm using the channel as a way to really just express how my, myself, how I always wanted to express myself. People used to kind of be like, you either do videos or you do music or you do. I was like, no, I just I want a platform to do whatever I want to do. And noisy images is about um, unpacking culture and setting trends for culture by understanding other trends, you know, and. Uh, and I think that it's going to grow into a lot of things as you see like the different types of videos they keep expanding you know I keep coming up with different things to talk about um, and people are starting to know little by little that I also like make the music I let my followers know like hey I'm learning how to produce um, I'm going to make some beats that aren't that great but I'm going to post them anyway because I want you guys to see my journey from decent to great um, and you know, cause I believe in that, like in this day and age where nobody's honest and nobody wants to make mistakes and nobody wants like, why not? Like, why not just, you know, let the world see my progress, you know, right now I'm making video essays tomorrow. I might be producing an album. I don't know, but, but noisy images is here to be that platform for that though. I want it also to be bigger than me. And I want, um, other artists to feel like, you know, they are part of, you know, the noisy images community and whatever they can, you know, I have a friend who he runs my Instagram page and, you know, he has his own little, he ha- not little, huge. He has an, his own big insight on how that world works. I'm not good with Instagram and stuff like that, but he understands that culture. And so for me, it's, it's bigger than me. I want noisy images to become, um, uh, a, a key, a key like tastemaker in this culture. Hmm. Do you think it can like you've in, in, Oh yeah. In one year, you're three quarters of the way there, pretty much to a hundred thousand people paying attention and caring about what you, what you post. Like, how yes. do you see the next one, two, five years progressing? You know, I honestly I don't know because it it grows in really interesting ways. Because I thought that it would just be noticing it grow in numbers, but I I feel that I have a and I'm not trying to compare, but I, th- there are there are other YouTubers that do similar things to what I do, who have ten like ten times the following, but I don't think they have half the dedication that my followers have. Yes, the community. Be- mm. Yes, I get so many messages, so many emails, so many people just wanting to talk and 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 about music and all that stuff and you know the the comments you know, they they say some of the nicest wonderful things and they're always looking forward to the stuff and they treat you know they tell me about you know oh I watch it with my dad or I watch it with my little brother and it's like th- you know it means something to people so I'm like okay it may not be growing in the like hundreds of thousands that I wanted to but to me this is more precious because as this grows I know that there's actually that these people actually care about my content because i would rather have that than be like okay i don't know where the i don't know where these subscribers come from but somehow i have to keep them happy before they leave (laughs) you know because i i I know that's a struggle that some content creators go through you know it's like oh wow okay i got a hundred thousand subscribers really fast how do i keep them excited Mm. go ahead i'll say you don't have any haters at all like you said you get a lot of love but you don't you don't find you have much hate on your channel Oh no! I definitely get hate on my channel. Oh yeah, yeah we all no, get uh, Yeah, we all get hate. Uh, but the the hate a lot of times is so dumb. Like like I can't. 
I don't get. I I am a half black, half Mexican, uh, Christian homeschooled kid that grew up in a white neighborhood. I've been made fun of for everything in my life. Like I'm not. I'm, you know what I mean? Like hater. I don't know what haters really are in terms of like when someone makes fun of me or whatever. I like it's like water off my back, like a duck. Does it bother you when people originally assumed you were white based off the sound of your voice at the start? Uh, I, th- that did bother me, not because so much of myself, but I, it hurt me in the sense that I know that there are so many young black men who feel the same way or they feel like they are not seen a, seen as really black just because of the way the inflection of their you know sound uh, voice is like. Uh, you know, and that that's a real thing, but... I don't think necessarily that that's the place that they were coming from in the comments, but you know, I, I do know though that that's you know, kids sometimes they feel a little insecure about that. You know, they're like, oh yeah, I don't. Do I have to like dress it up? Do I have to like put ba- bass in my voice and like <laughs> use like a ton of slang? Now, sometimes we do codes. Sometimes we do code switch. Like, oh, you'll see me using more slang in certain circles than others, but we always do that. But I've never felt like I've had to like change everything to be like and and some kids do and so when i saw when i when i saw those comments i just didn't like it because i don't think it's helpful you know to the to the people who are insecure about those things fair enough i mean i think it's really important to touch on um how you interact with what you create and where you come from oh yeah for sure um but to bring it back to to music is there anything you wanted to touch on before I ask what I want to ask, I'm mm. talking. No, no, you get into you. I'm, I'm still thinking what I want to do. Because to go back to music, I actually had a couple of our community who had questions for you. And I'll ask one of them now. This is by Malin. So he asks, which hip hop artist is your least favorite, whether this based off personality, style, or mm. in real life, their image? Ooh. Wow, you know it's funny is like no one I yeah, you only get questions of like who's the best. I've never heard like who's wow, the least. <laughs> well, you know the the hard part about that question though is the fact that there are so many whack artists out there oh, that bro. like to, to call someone the least is like that's a huge insult. So I'm not I'm not going to say the least for two reasons. One uh, it's 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 hard, but the other part is it's gonna change for me. I'm I'm very much like wishy washy like that. But one I really really dislike, and he's most likely not. I don't think it's gonna be anybody from this era. Oof. You know what I really hate? I'm not gonna say a specific artist because it's not helpful, and I feel like someone's setting me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know what I really hate though? I really hate. I have love for the independent scene, the backpacker scene. I don't even know if they still call it the backpacker yeah, scene. Still cool I, I, you know, I came, I came up in that with a lot of friends and even knowing people who rap that. But there are so many people that come out of that, and people think they're good artists just because they say real stuff, and their music is terrible. And the certain followers that they get, like they get, like they get on the blogs and stuff like that, and it's like I don't, I don't get it. Like, and the problem, and this is the thing. Then everyone's talking about how they're they're gonna be the next thing, they're gonna be the next Kendrick or something like that. And then like six months go goes by, and who's like, who's this person? And then and then I also like so, and then there's like, and it's not for everybody, but having been in that world, there's like this fake celebrity. That like goes on in that world where it's like okay yeah like calm down you only have a hundred followers and you're acting like you're Michael Jackson like so I don't know in that world there can be like this really disproportionate like sense of like grandeur and a lot of people praising music that is not good. I think. Um, I, was gonna, I think it comes a lot from um, people that obviously see the mainstream and a lot of the content that's talked about and then they what they basically see the backpacker stuff and all they do is look at the content which it is pretty average probably but compared to the stuff that they just see in the spotlight they're like, oh it's so bad this stuff is obviously better but they don't think about the whole package like the visuals the personality like the beat everything else they just look at pretty much what's being said that's probably one of the big things i think that 
Yeah, that, and also think sometimes people probably have like a knee jerk reaction. Where like I have a friend who tells me he's like, I feel like at some point people decided like music that sounds good isn't like great art anymore, <laughs> and like it, it, you know he's being like kind of facetious, but at the same time like I do think that there are people who like. You know, you get used to listening to like a lot of pop stuff and like it sound, you know, it starts to sound formulaic to you or whatever. And then sometimes people just love to run to the opposite side. Uh, oh, I don't even know if like Death Grips count as a rapper, but I really don't like them. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know if you've seen any of our reactions or reviews on the two Death Grips album, Ex Military and The Money Store, but I mean, I don't, I don't really feel, see their, their, I don't, I don't like them either. I fuck with them. I like them. <laughs> but what don't you uh, like about them? Um, yeah, and and I'm totally open to you know. Sometimes I hate on an artist for a while. Like I hated uh, I hated Yeezus for a long time before really? I came around to it. Uh, I just you know I, I am I am aware though that I can be really reactionary, so I do give things a chance, you know. And then especially when I was hearing Kanye's like reading reading and listening to his interviews and him talking about where he was coming from you know with that album i was like oh, okay let me go back and listen and then you know it kind of starts to grow on you mm. but like things like death grips uh and albums that are similar to that of being like so experimental to the point of um like really almost it's like it's like bordering on like not music but is at the same time you know like it's hard for me to because I, I want to feel like I want to be moved by something. I don't want to always feel. I don't want it to feel like I'm just being like assaulted by the sound. <laughs> That's a great and way like, to put it. Yeah. Yeah, but like some people, and and I'm okay with that. Like in doses, like that happens in Yeezus. Like there's times where it's like super overwhelming, or you know that happens in a lot of music. Even like great, there's great rock sound. I mean rock songs that have su you know stuff like that happening. But for it to be like the whole song. It's just a lot for me, and I don't, I don't understand the appeal. I would be, it, I would love it if someone could ex explain the appeal to me. And I think overall, I just like, I almost don't believe when. Like, are you guys like listening to this every day? Like, do you wake up in the morning and listen to Death Grips, or do you listen to Death Grips before you want to like turn up at a party? Like, when do you listen to Death Grips? I've listened to it on the way to work. I listen to it at home, like. I, I really love their experimental sound. I love a lot of their lyrical content that I've got into a lot more. But I can see exactly why people don't like it. But going back to Kanye, yeah. there's a question I'm going to ask every Kanye lover, man. What is your thoughts on the Bleach asshole line? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's... Come on, be honest. I really, really, really hate it. Yeah. I really hate that line so much. But in some ways, I like I understand like the mood like that that it's setting for the song, right? Because it's like showing the like Kanye is like you know, in one side it's like talking like the, the glory of God, and then the next second's like, well, you know, I might just cheat on my wife with this model. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and then it. You know, so it's like, uh, it, like I get artistically where he was going with it, yeah. but it's just, it's just hard not to like cringe. cringe. But then at the same time, I bet you, I, I bet you, if someone asked him, at the same time he was going for that. I guarantee it. Hmm. You know, I gar, I guarantee that he knew it was going to make people uncomfortable, and for that reason, people would remember it. Well, based on you just were talking about Kanye, another question. What's your most favorite and least favorite Kanye tracks? Oh, uh, oof. most most favorite is an as another hard one, but I would say most uh, right now, huh? Kanye, Father, stretch my hands right now. Right now. Um, mm -hmm, right now, even with the line, I think musically it's it's his best. Um. I think that like it's the perfect storm, you know, like of the sampling, mm. Mike Dean, um, Cuddy, like everything that we love about Kanye is like in that song. Uh, and then, you know, and then you have the Panda verse, which, uh, you know, the funny part is like, I forget that like Panda is its own song. Right. I feel all the time, man. Yeah. Like it really does feel like Kanye adopted it. Um and yeah, like overall, like that's just a great song. Least favorite is probably. Oh man, he has some doozies. People man. are gonna, pe people are gonna crucify me for this one. 
My least favorite Kanye song, and my friends hate me for this. Here we go. My, le- my least favorite Kanye song is Slow Jams. Ooh, really? I love Slow Jams. I Slow guess- Jams my least favorite Kanye song. I'm glad for your honesty, man. What about albums, though? I feel it- like albums would be a bit easy for you. Uh... Oh yeah, albums do feel easy. Life of Pablo right now, but it's on a rotation between Life of Pablo, Jesus, and 808s for me. I love t- Fantasy, Dark Twisted Fantasy, but I may have overplayed it for myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know it's amazing. Everybody knows it's amazing. It, it feels almost like the obvious choice, and I feel like list like I feel like it, it feels like the default choice. Like, duh, everybody says it's, it's the best one. That's the best one. I used to feel like that, but then Pablo came out, and then I've listened to Yeezus more than any of the albums. Jesus. The 808s, uh, my favorite. But which like, one's your favorite? 808s, man. That's like, that was the Yeah, well, time. and then, yeah, I was going to go to there, too, because, yeah, 808s, um, I, I love that one a lot. I, I love, now that I've become more, less about, like, the words in music and just loving the Sonics a lot more, mm-hmm. um, I, I was actually tweeting about this because... Uh, you know, I was, I was, I was saying, I don't, I'm not, I don't love traditional hip hop like that anymore. Uh, I love all the melody, you know, like I said, going back to the child in me. Um, and I love the rapping too, but it has to be like married for me to like really love it. And so, um, lost my train of thought there. Sorry. That's <laughs> OG. No, what, what draws you, you talk about Yeezus. What do you think draws you now to Yeezus? It originally an album that you didn't particularly like at the start. Mm, time just time just time and like i said i really did latch on to those interviews where he was really talking about like what he set out to do with that album and in that i respect that i really respect an artist standing by their choices um no matter how crazy it is not backing down so you know i really was like you know maybe i just really need to listen to it because this guy believes in his soul yeah that he created one of the best pieces of art with Yeezus. And I was like, I am going to find out why. <laughs> and, you know, and uh, the, the one that really did it for me, though, the one that um, flipped the switch was Hold My Liquor. I finally did like a, like a, no, I guess I just wasn't, I wasn't distracted by anything else. And I was just listening to that and I just dialed in. And I was like, that's it. Like, that's, that's like the gateway drug to the rest of the album for me. Even though I like New Slaves and stuff, but. Then I was able to listen to Guilt Trip and and really love Blood on the Leaves and um, all those other ones. Like it all, and then it felt cohesive, and then it felt like a good project. To move away from then Kanye to more unknown guys. This is another question from another another fan of ours. Unknown, unique artists that you love that you would love to see go mainstream, or you think should be more popular. Who do you think of? Mm-hmm. So, for example, for me, I'm saying a guy like Mick Jenkins. Mm, yeah, Mick Jenkins. Uh, sheesh. Um, B- Boogie, who got signed to Shady, oh, you been following Shady Records. You've been following him yeah. since 48? Um, I haven't listened to all the latest stuff, but I listened to Thirst 48. Oh, my man. Yeah, I've been on him since then. I've been, I've been a big fan for like three, four years. It's good to see him doing big things now. Um... Not rapper, but May- I would love to see um, Maybell from the UK. I'd love to see her become b- mainstream. That'd be the greatest thing ever. You posted on the Instagram a while back about her, didn't you? Yeah, no, I lo- she's great. I, lo- I love her music. I like my dream and like want to track her down. I want to interview her. Like I, I think, I believe she is, if she doesn't mess it up, and I don't know, like she's talented, like she's got the look. She's like, she's got all like, she seems to be heavy into fashion. Like, she's like perfect, and about. and I'm thinking, you know, like as an artist, like this is like, this could go so well. I really hope that, like, I wish the best for her career and her choices that they may, you know, blossom into this. I think she could be the next one. And I, when I say one, I don't even know what I mean by that. But like when you saw Rihanna come up. Or when you saw, you know, I, I think she can be that. Who are the, what other female artists then do you, do you think need more recognition? Because we talk about rap, we talk about hip-hop. Most people default 
to males, which is kind of expected considering it's dominant with males. What other female rappers are you really fucking with? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't really listen to female rappers. And that's well, not artists. because I don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, artists. Uh, Rihanna is my favorite. I think Rihanna is the greatest singer, the greatest singer today. And because, and yes, Beyonce fans can get, can, can, they, they can fight me if they want. Because, <laughs> because her voice is so unique. Nobody sounds like Rihanna. Uh, yeah. You have people who try to sound like Rihanna. Right. You, like, you hear it. You, you hear them trying to, like, change their little inflection so they sound like Rihanna. But... What? She can spit bars too, man. It, yeah, and she can do that too. So I'm saying she's... she. Her voice is just... It's her. She It starts and it's like, yes, it's a Rihanna song. And it's, there are a couple... I'm not going to lie. There's a couple... There's a few songs that I really don't like out of her catalog. But overall, good. Rihanna and um, other female art. Haim. I love Haim. Haim. How, um, um, how do you spell that? H-Y-M-E? I think it's H-E-I-M. H- H-A-I-M. Haim. Uh, they're, uh, th- th- they're three sisters. Uh, they form a band. They're, they're out of, uh, here, the Valley here in LA. Hmm. Uh, they are amazing. Oh, they it. are, <laughs> they are geniuses. Wait, two of five. And why are they what? geniuses? Oh my gosh. I mean, you just, for, first you just got to listen to the music, but they just, the music that comes out of them. Like I do not under, like they, their melodies are so beautiful their music is so percussive mm. like it really grooves it feels like some of the songs feel like early like off the wall michael jackson not not his voice but like the production you know like the way that the the drums go and the way that they loop and the way that you know the 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 guitar riffs and the bass like it's it's dancey but it's like classic though it's it's not dancey like electronic it's dancey like in the sense of like uh, when discos was mi- was mixing with R and B, um, and so they have that sound, but they also like add their own twist into it, and they like really like b- borrow a lot from Fleetwood Mac, and they really like have like kind of that aesthetic going on, and they're all drummers by trade, like they all started as drummers, so like all music is like built around the drums, and it's like. They, the, their greatest their greatest song in my opinion is not even on one of their albums it's on Kid Cudi's album Indica. Oh, is that the it's the is that the Red Eye song? Red Eye. Yeah, I remember that. Damn, that was them too cuz I I I'm only just like looking at Haim right now but like I remember hearing that song and yeah, I love that song. I mean, Kid Cudi's my favorite artist yeah. so. Kid Cudi's amazing. He is. Kid Cudi is amazing. He is absolutely yes. my hero without a doubt. Oh, Kid Cudi! Kid Cudi got me through college. Oh, bro, Kid Cudi he, was. He got me through school. Yeah, Kid, through a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Kid Cudi, Kid Cudi's music was a good friend. I, I will say that. Uh, Speed and Bullet to Heaven. Thoughts? Oh, that's one of the worst things I've ever heard in my <laughs> Dude, life. Dude, Beavers and Butthead skits, worst skits of all time, guaranteed. I don't know why he did that. Oh, like I don't I, mind why, the album, but those skits, I like, just. Why can't, did he? Oh. Like why did he hurt us like that? Like what did we do? We were we were his fans and he abused us. But we're back. We're back. We forgive him because the he proved I don't know what he was doing. I really want to know what he was doing. I just think he just wanted to just make different music and just be outside. I think at the time he was like really into grunge music and was trying to make his own grunge album. I think that's that's the only thing I, I, I do think I, I do agree with that and I do I do actually respect I do respect the 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 drive, and I do respect him actually experimenting. I will he will he will be a hero in my eyes for that. For oh yeah, same. It ta- it takes courage to release something like Speeding Bullet to Heaven. When you're not like it takes <sighs> it takes true courage to do that. I will always give him that. But it did not hit me like he expected it to. Maybe he didn't even expect it to, but that did not work for me at all. It's all right. His next album was all right, so um, we're all good. Oh, um, his his next oh passion uh, that was great. Passion pain demons. I mean, oh, I, I loved really that. Liked it. That that was like he that was like that album was like it was a vibe album for the, me. It yeah, and it was very much like it was like hip hop meets Stranger Things. It was like the dopest. Say what? 
So that's a really good way of putting it because a lot of the electronic repetitive sounds on the album do have very Stranger Things vibes for it. So, Oh, yeah, and that's my jam. Like when it comes to actually producing, like that kind of producing. The funny part is I actually don't, that's not my favorite type of music to listen to, but every time I like get down and make beats, like I always want to make that sound. I don't know. Like making that sound is always fun. <laughs> Kid, now, what did you, you said before something interesting to me? Kid Cudi got you through college, is that right? Yeah. When you say got you through college, like what was that that Kid Cudi helped you through? Uh, he he- helped me through long periods of depression. I grew up with I grew up with a severe, very severe anxiety disorder since I was like eight years old. So I am 20, I'm about to be 27. So I've, I've lived with that that long, uh, almost 20 years. Um, and college was an extremely hard time. And yeah, Kid Cudi's music was a lifeline. It really was. I don't think I would have ever actually hurt myself, but... I was probably as low as you could go without hurting yourself. Um, and yeah, his music just, like I said, it felt like a good friend. Uh, because it's so like non-confrontational. It speaks to the truth uh, of what it's like, you know, to go through, you know, um, such emotional things. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it doesn't beat you over the head with it either. You know, you, you just, you kind of feel like you're going through it with him as opposed to him like, Oh, you know, I was dealing with all this stuff and now I like I beat it all and you can do it too. Like I love that too. Kanye has a lot of that. Mm. But you know, but Cuddy was more like on the 808s kick, you know, where it was like, "Hey, I'm just going through this and do you guys want to listen because it, you know, maybe you might relate." Like that's how that felt to me. And so it was very easy to listen to whenever I felt, you know, really bummed or really down because at the same time he's like upbeat enough. Yeah. You know, like he's upbeat enough to not like feel like you're just like wallowing in whatever's bothering you. I also think because he's he's also quite a simplest lyricist. Like a lot of people give him a lot of like credit, but I feel like his lyricism is definitely one of his weaker sides. But just the way he paints it in a simple way, like I feel like that's how a larger scale of an audience can connect with him because he doesn't oversimplify things, overcomplicate. Oh, oh yeah, things, so. and he he has he has such relatable. You know, I always listen to the <sighs> "Too Bad I Have to Destroy You," and where he's like, "People talk shit about me." You know, you know that one. Mm. He did it. He did a demo with Kanye, and he and he and he it has like there's a version with Kanye, and it's dope. But it says the 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 lyric says people talk shit about me, but deep down they know and they ain't right. When I walk in the room, they can't look into my eyes. And I was man, I was listening to that recently because I had like one of those experiences with somebody. Yeah. Like someone was just around, like talk, talk, you know, talking shit, and that had that exact same thing. Walk in that room, and they they don't like. Why aren't you looking me in the eye? And I was listening to that song the other day, and I was like, damn, like that was real, you know, like like Cuddy's actually being like straight up real. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's a great artist. Yeah, man, he's amazing. Are there any artists that have helped you, or well, any artists from any genre that helped you maneuver through those mental challenges besides Kid Cuddy? Mm, or was he really Kanye? Like, yeah, Kanye's a big one. Kanye was more of a big one in, in the terms of my work ethic. I think whenever I felt like I couldn't kill it 100%. at work, yeah, you know, you you bring Kanye. Whenever I felt like someone was bringing me down, someone wasn't respecting me. Yeah. Someone was, you know, being a young black uh, professional in a world like Hollywood, you do run into a lot of. Um, now, I don't even want to say racism because that's kind of a given, but you run into a lot of dream killers. Okay. Uh, for, you know, for some reason who like to single out someone who doesn't really look like them or came from their social class. Uh, so when you're listening to something like Kanye, it's like, okay, all right, I can go, I can go to work today. You know, like I can, I can do this, or like I can, I can show them, I can show them that I'm, you know, worth my, you know, whatever they, whatever the paycheck or more. So he's a great pump up guy. Kid Cudi um, was great, like straight when I just felt low. A lot of um, Sam Cook, Sam Cook's voice, like, is a healing voice. Um, Sam Cook, in my opinion, one of the, the the greatest singer of all time. Uh, R. Kelly would not be R. Kelly without Sam Cooke. Um, 
who else do I love? Oh, Jim, James Taylor and Jim Croce, folk singers, both love them. Um, these, yeah, these people, they, yeah, they're all really formative. Uh, Frank Ocean, Frank Ocean. I, I honestly, like, I mean, I still deal with stuff now. I still need to listen to people. Frank Ocean gets me, gets me through hard days. Um, you know, it's, it's not something that people, uh, you know, I always thought when I was younger, I was like, you know, one day, like when I'm grown and, you know, don't have to like listen to these artists, it it, just because I feel bad and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it's, you know, it's 20 years later. Life still sucks sometimes. And I'm actually in, I'm actually in the, uh, happiest time of my life. And I still, you know, you still, you can't help it sometimes, you know, there there are health issues, which I'm, anybody who's listening, I am okay. I do, um, you know, I, I take care of myself and people take care of me and I am in a very wonderful, wonderful place. But at the same time, life happens and stuff like music, as we all know, is really kind of the centerpiece. That is a big reason why it exists is to bring people together so that they can, work through their issues maybe sometimes by escaping from it sometimes by relating you know as we all i'm sure as we all know growing up as kids like you having a bad day like you run to that cd or that album or that youtube link or whatever and you're just like oh this is it like i've been waiting for this moment all day long (laughs) how do you see mental illness and then music interacting because there's a couple of artists out there who talk about it frequently people like kid cuddy people like kanye especially if you hear Oh, what was that unreleased music video he did? Um, oh, I feel some. I feel. I feel you know. like. I feel like that. Yeah. Have you? Heard oh, that? I feel, oh, so great. Um, what artists are doing good in that? Um, like, well, there's actually. Yeah. Some, Go ahead. Oh, there, there's this new artist, this young kid, um, who everyone should be on right now. Um, his name is Miles Kennedy. I saw that interview. Am I? Yes, and he's 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 gonna be he's gonna be a great 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 talent. He's he does all the production himself. He's seventeen years old and is doing production that's just beautiful. He's and he's shown me stuff. It's just great. He's great, and he um, he talks about mental illness, and I'm sure he will continue to find creative ways to talk about that. Um, Kendrick does a very good job uh, of that. Um, Kanye, in his own ways, does a very good job because he's able. the The powerful thing about Kanye admitting, uh, you know, struggles with mental illness, like he does in a couple songs in Pablo and stuff, is the fact that he, you know, he knows how famous he is and how, you know, much these kids look up to him as sort of like this god. But you know, he shows his flaws. I think that's a very, very powerful thing. What do you, um, what do you think about Logic's one eight one eight hundred and how that impact has happened in the way that he describes it? Because I hear a lot of people resonate with it but a lot of people not resonate with it because of the simple way that he's describing it in terms you know if one person you know who was gonna kill themselves called that number then it was it was the greatest thing ever yeah yeah and you know someone exactly like, that was saved by that song so that's what it comes down to i guess yeah that's all that really matters you know there are times where we do have to kind of step aside and be like okay it's just music and music alone doesn't save lives you know, mu- mu- music music can be a great, uh, you know, it, it can be a great companion, you know, when we're going through hard times. But, you know, it's not the it's not the end all be all solution. So if someone comes up and if you don't think the song is that great, but he's legitimately helping people like, I don't know if this is the time to be criticizing the song. <laughs> do, you, do you think mental illness has a stigma in hip hop and rap? Do you think it should be talked about more, or you think it's at a place now where it's becoming a lot more mainstream within music? No, I think mental illness is poorly represented all across the world. I don't think anyone has a really good grasp on it. Um, the first walk-in clinic for mental health was barely erected, like I think, like two years ago wow. in in the USA. The first one in all of in all of American history. There should be one in every city every every major city county several times over uh and it's an issue that i've struggled with but i don't have many friends who haven't struggled with it on some former level and usually 
me and my friends, we kind of all have different things, you know, and so we're not, you know, we're definitely not one size fits all, right? Is there's not just the depressed kids and the, you know, they don't fit in little boxes. So it's hard, you know, everybody needs a certain different kind of help. But the, but the but thing is, we don't have, you know, our government is not putting enough research into this stuff. It's just not, people don't really care. Like they think they say they do. And, you know, big pharma just brings up, you know, we, we all just drug them up, met, you know, med them up, but like, you can't help it. If you're sick, you need medication. Like, what are you going to do? But they won't go out of their way, you know, to put money into allowing us for it to be affordable for people to go to therapists or, you know, have reasons, you know, to have accommodations because of their mental health issues and, and all this stuff. So for the fact that it doesn't really exist there for people in real life, like the support for their mental health and the fact that, it's one of uh, – it has a huge stigma in African-American culture and Mexican culture, yeah. which I come from both. Uh, it is really hard for it to be properly represented in media. And when you see it, you're going to notice that it's kind of – it's just like you know one by one individual accounts because, one, there is still a stigma. But I also don't want to oversimplify it because – we're all different and we all have various issues. So it's actually a very difficult issue to attack head on because a lot of times you're dealing with very case by case basis stories. So the best an artist can really do is tell us what their experience is. And that's what Kendrick does well. That's what uh, Miles Kennedy does well. That's what uh, Donald Glover has done that. Kanye has done that. I think the best you could do is be honest about your experience because I think if you go out and you just like preach to everybody about the proper way to do it, like, you're just, it's too complex. I do feel things are getting better in the world to do with mental health though. Because I know me and a huge amount of my friends, we have a lot of Discord chats. We, we talk a lot about, like, we always make sure that if we want to say something that we say it. Like, I feel like a while ago, that just wouldn't happen. Like, cause I know I know my dad growing up, like, it just you just didn't talk about it. You just, you just hit it. You just kept it bottled. But these days, I feel like, sure, it needs definitely a lot more to be displayed. But it definitely is making a huge amount of progress as well with the younger generation. Oh, yeah. I mean, awareness is definitely um, if there's one great thing that this uh, current time has given us is awareness. Um, And I think that, you know, we're going to see people do amazing things with that awareness because, Mm -hmm. you know, it used to to be so hard to like police brutality was something, you know, that us as black people have been telling people for a long time. But like now that like smartphones could like film them in HD and share them in like split seconds. Now it's like okay, this is actually happening. And then they're like, oh, wait, what? It happens all the time? And it's like, yes. It's like, we just had to wait for the iPhone 6. And then, you know, that's how we found out. <laughs> that's so funny. That could be a fucking commercial. An advertisement, I can say. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, iPhone 6 saved our lives. <laughs> I really lives. wanted to ask you uh, this question um, relating, to, relating to controversy, which is the topic we're covering right now but what controversial thing do you believe within music that few people agree with you on um as wait 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 rephrase the question please so i could rephrase it in the way saying what controversial thing do you believe that few people would actually okay agree with you Okay, so not just musically, just in general? Well, if you don't have a music, you can take the in general one, but... Okay, I got you. For music, music. that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Music, music, music. Um, I don't think... I don't think lyrics are the most important thing. Uh, And I know a lot of younger listeners, especially of hip-hop, really, really hold lyrics in high esteem. Uh, and I don't as much anymore, and I'm actually a lot more abstract in terms of how I like, you know, I, I listen to a lot more like singer songwriter stuff, which is more like, you know, folk music is like very abstract and no one, you know, people aren't really naming names or landmarks, you know, they're just kind of telling these little freeform stories. And I really like that kind of music. And I feel like in some ways that's a better form of music because I feel like if I really want to hear like, I, like I said, I read a lot, so maybe that's what it is. Like, I kind of get my word fix. And so when it comes time to listen to the music, like, I I, I kind of just want to vibe, you know? And so 
but I think I get a little more kind of aggressive about that stance. And I know at some point, like, it's going to look like I hate lyrics, but I like don't hate them. I just like I get bored. And so right now I'm really bored of like rap music in general. And so the artists that are like like Travis Scott. And the way Kid Cudi, like, you know, kind of, you can't, he doesn't have a genre. Oops, sorry. And, uh, you know, 808, like, that stuff is, like, really intriguing to me. And so it's, like, really hard for me to, like, go and listen to to Wu-Tang or even, like, Good Kid Mad City. Like, right now I'm, like, jumping on these vibes, you know. Go ahead. I was gonna say yeah, it's kind of really good because a lot of your fan base, it seems, with noisy images would be hip hop related. And a lot of and a lot of hip hop music people do tend to focus on the lyrics, especially like like you said, the whole backpacker vibe. Like they're more about the actual lyrics than anything else, really. So I can see how that would. Yeah, be and I and I used to be one of those. Um, and I had a, you know a couple friends that would kind of challenge me to like, yeah, I mean like words are good, but like. The problem with the words in the sense is sometimes people get so hung up on the words that they co-sign bad music with good yep. words. That, you know, that, and so that's really interesting. Can you expand on that point right now? Cosign bad yeah. music with good words. What's an example of that? Um, I think. Oh, for example, like because, and I can say it because I know he didn't like it himself. Like, remember when Lupe Fiasco came out with lasers? Oh, I remember. And you know, like that's an example of like technically, like if you were to read those lyrics, like okay, like he's saying some real stuff, and he's like speaking for his community and like our, you know, the black community in general, and blah blah blah, and you know, it's real. But like, the music is pretty bad, yeah, and even no. he, and even he agrees. So yeah, he you offered, know, because, he offered we, to get people to send them their CDs so he could burn them or destroy them. <laughs> yes, yes it it exactly, hilarious. exactly. You know, but some people did love it, and there are some people that like a lot of musics that are like that are like that. Mm. A lot of, I mean, they like a lot of albums. Sorry, I like ran over. I get tongue tied. Um, <laughs> yeah, like people are like, oh yeah, like he's saying real stuff, blah blah. And but then you listen to the beats, and they're just like trash, or it's it's not even like well like mixed, and and it's just like okay. If you like the words this much and you care about, the, like, why don't you just, like, read a book that is actually deeper about whatever this is about? Because I came to listen to music for it to sound good because maybe it's better. I like, sometimes I like, like, spoken word poetry. Like, if I really need the words, like, I'll do that. Or I'll listen to, to Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, which I feel like is – that's another album that kind of, like, teeters between, like, spoken word and music. So it's like, ah, I'd listen to that for that. But like, I don't listen to Kanye or Kid Cudi or even like some of these soul singers and classic artists. I, Michael Jackson. I don't listen to Michael Jackson for lyrics. No, right. You feel the music. Yeah, you feel it. And, you know, honestly, there's a lot of Michael Jackson songs that I love and have listened to a bunch of times, but I actually can't really follow along word for word. Um. And I like that's in some ways, I think it's like the power of the music because it takes me away every time. I don't even I'm not even able to like pay attention to the lyrics like I've been taken away by, the you know, by the vibe of it. So uh, that's kind of all I mean, really. It's like you can have both. And actually, artists who do both are usually the best artists. Hmm. Kanye does it well, you know. Uh, Tupac and Biggie and Jay-Z and like these are examples of people who have the words and the music in line. Um, and those people like are shiny examples of how it should be. But I feel like if you have to have only one or the other, I would rather have trash lyrics with great music than the other way around. I'm the same, man. What's an example of that? Trash lyrics. So it's trash lyrics. People going shit on the song and you'd be like, no, I actually really like that. What, what's, what's an example of that for you? Father's Church uh. part one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, trash lyrics, and in that, you know, I say trash lyrics in the sense that they they might say that, but like, mm, like a good example would be, like, it's clear that some of the a lot of the young, not a lot of them, because actually, if you really pay attention, you can actually hear that he's saying things. But there's young thug songs out there that you know are clearly an experiment of form. Mask off, you know, like, and that song. Oh, yeah. What do you feel? Uh, uh, mask off i feel like i feel like it has content see that's the thing though i feel like sometimes like you know if they're talking about this uh, 
it's like if you understand where these artists are coming from, you'll realize that they're not saying meaningless things. Like mask off may not mean anything to like just anybody, but if you're just really into the vibe, like you're like, okay, like I'm trying to remember because I can't remember future verses, but I I remember like the verses seemingly being like rather literal, right? Or was it just kind of nonsense? Honestly, uh, I'm looking I, at it right I, now. I listen to Future for his lyrics, man. So yeah. I listen to it from them beats. Yeah, I, I, I'm look. Yeah, no, I'm looking at his lyrics right now. And okay, yeah, he's not saying anything deep, but at the same time, it's not like nothing. So, but like I said, the music is dope. Uh, but I think a, a good example, uh, like I said earlier, was Young Thug. He just like a lot of times you can tell he's just playing around with like the fluidity of his flow and all that stuff. And there was some artist who came out with the songs. I, it was just mumbling. And she wasn't even a big artist, but it sounded dope. Mm. Like, because, you know, it was the, the melody was on point and all that stuff. Like, James Brown, a lot of times, doesn't he? Like, who no one knows James what James Brown. Brown is saying. You know, it, you know he just, a, like, it just sounds like energy. And, like, that's how you can do it, though. If the energy is right and the melody is right and the production is beautiful, mm-hmm. you don't have to say anything. I mean, look at Kanye exactly. at the end of Runaway. Uh, and distorted. he's just like, yeah, it's all distorted. Just preach, singing dog. To... preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it is. It, it's music. It's all music. It's just like, I just want to. You know, you just want to feel it. That's it. Hmm. Wrapping up to the last couple questions, you know, we got to ask, like, what are your favorite? albums of all time we have to ask that question uh, well, i haven't seen any interviews of you so i don't know if you've yeah. covered this specifically do you have them uh, once you go back to it yes in no in no particular order um th- uh thriller michael jackson's thriller um I have to uh, Google this title, but um, The Life of Pablo. That's, that's, that's out of all Kanye's albums, that's still number one for you. Sorry, hold on. I knocked my mic over. Uh, yeah, that that's my number one uh, for now. Yes. You know, it, it, the, the thing about Kanye is you can't you can't stick with one forever. No, uh, he's on the mountain right Yeah, now. Oh yeah, uh, I love listening to uh, Jim Croce, um, '70s singer songwriter. His album um, "I Got an I Got a Name" goes up there uh, for me because it's it's the perfect I think um, representation of like the singer songwriter movement in the '70s, and I feel like it it. Uh, he's just beautiful with his words and his guitar playing. It's it's so chill, like. The best thing, if you just like at night get a drink and listen to that music, you feel old and wise and at peace. <laughs> it's just, it's so great. Um, uh, you know, it's hard because I, as I'm thinking of these things, I'm thinking about when I was younger and like I would have easily been like, good kid, Mad City. <laughs> and no, not, not really anymore, just because uh, there's just so many, there's so much other great music. Um, what is one of your? I'll, I'll come. I'll, I'll come with something. But tell me one of your favorites while, while I go through the Rolodex in my head. Um, Kid Cudi's "Man on the Moon" is probably my favorite album for sure. But then, like, mm. it kind of like deviates a bit as well. Like, I, I love Frank Sinatra's "In the Wee Small Hours." It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Oh, that's a great album. He's that's a, a great big, album. He's a big influence to me. Also, I'm a big fan of Mac Miller. So, watching movies with the sound off is probably one of my favorite albums. Oh, cool. Um, Tyler the Creator's Wolf as well. Big Tyler fan. Mm. Mm. And then for me, uh, 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying pretty much got me into hip-hop and music. Um, oh, that's great. And then Dark Fantasy is my favorite Kanye album, so that's definitely up there. But those, the, those you know, yeah. It, um, the, it's a Sam Cooke album. Um, I love a bit of Sam Cooke, man. Keep keep moving on. Wait, 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 wait. Mm, no. Keep moving on is a compilation. There is an album by... I, I forgot the title of it. 
by Sam Cooke, and it was just this beautiful album. It might have, it might be "Ain't That Good News" by Sam Cooke from. Mm, oh, title lies. Title. Oh, yes, I use title by the way. Title. <laughs> <laughs> titles. Title says 2003. Definitely didn't come out in 2003. But, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> but yeah, He's but uh, ain't. Uh, 50s, 60s, yeah. 50s, 60s, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so, but but I believe it's Ain't That Good News because as I'm looking at the track list, yeah, it is because A Change Is Gonna Come with, you know, obviously his most famous song is in there. So that, to me, is, it, there was an interesting story about Sam Cooke and one day I will make, uh, you know, something about him. But Sam Cooke was, he struggled with, he was trying to be like the Frank Sinatra type, mm. but, you know, because he was black and had a soul background and stuff, he was having a hard time reconciling that image because he felt like he was forcing it. And, you know, when he decided to fully give in to his soul uh, roots and not try to like have to cross over, that's like when arguably the best music came from and that A Change Is Gonna Come song kind of came from kind of came from that whole era. So, like, for a Sam Cooke fan, it's, like, it's a very important album. Damn, man. I've actually listened to a lot of his music, but I haven't actually ever ingested in any of his albums. So you've kind of, like, inspired me to go listen to that album now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's really it's really easy to listen to. Mm. Um, did, 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 do I still have, like, one more album? Uh, Marshall Mathers LP. Okay, here we go. Damn. That's Marshall the Mathers LP. People. Yeah, that's, whew, that's a classic. Oh yeah, man. That really is a classic. Yeah, for me, it's um, a show for sure. You know, it, it's it, sometimes it's hard for me to pick, but Marshall Mathers has the, you know, that rebellious energy I was talking about. Marshall Mathers is just full, overflowing with that. All these albums. Oh wow! What'd you find? Sorry, I found out that. Mabel, Mabel, who I was talking about, just came out with a mixtape. So, so, so. <laughs> you'll see. Well, let's do now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably, most likely. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did I did I say five albums? About pretty much. We got Sam Cooke. We yeah. got Kanye. We got Michael Jackson. We got the other. Jim Froce. The. And we got uh, yeah, we got that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got five. Now, do all those al- right. all those artists who have made all those albums? Do those artists then align with who are your favorites? Like, are those also happen to be your favorite artists pretty much of all time? Yeah, actually, because they kind of represent my, they kind of represent like the full, um, like range of my taste because I loved the singer songwriter, like that singer songwriter music to me and not hip hop is the greatest marriage between lyrics and music because somehow those songwriters figured out how to be so lyrical that you could never miss a word that they said, but so melodic that it never felt forced, it always felt catchy. Like to me, that's that's genius. And then Kanye, for obvious reasons, we went over that, you know. Um, Eminem really represents that really rebellious spirit of mine that really loves to like push the envelope and and not be afraid of like what people think about you know what I'm trying to express. Um, the Sam Cooke is really like just when I just think of soul. When someone talks about soul music, like I just immediately revert to Sam Cooke. It's 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 like burned in my mind because every time I listen to his music, I kind of feel like this is the purest form. And that's just of course my opinion, but it like feels like that when I'm listening. To it. This is the purest form of this type of music. Um, so yeah, like all of those artists and the other albums included kind of feel like it's just a little bit of every, you know, bit of my favorite things, you know, mm-hmm. there's a little, little buffet that I made myself musically. If there's one Sam Cooke album we have to listen to, which one should we pick? Uh, I think that one that I, that I said, the ain't, ain't that good news. Yeah. All right. It it's, it's got a, it's got a big bright red album cover. Oh man, I'm a big fan of that era. So definitely gonna check it. Thank you. Um, yeah. To wrap up, like, you have obviously, you've educated yourself a lot on music and hip hop through arts and film. One, what is your, first one, like, what is your favorite music video and why? Like, the visuals are oh. super important to you. Mm-hmm. What stands out? Um, Kanye's Runaway is probably my favorite. I would put Runaway, see, the thing is, people, 
would think I'm just so strange in the same way that I put Moonwalker as one of the best films. I would also put Runaway in my favorites, not in the best, because it's a very kind of, mm, like, you know, for that budget, right? It's like a very, like, amateur film, but, like, it's so full of just this great imagery that I just keep coming back to it, even though, like, Kanye trying to act is terrible (laughs) and, like, the ballet scene lasts for like a super long time but like honestly like sometimes i just have it playing on my tv like on mute because it's just like a nice like vibe to have like in the office yeah um so yeah that's a huge one for me and i i count it as like a music video sort of um but as far as like under five minutes kind of music video uh flashing kanye's flashing lights is great and michael jackson's um leave me alone the one where his if you look it up it's the one where his like he's like he's he's he is turned into an amusement park sort of so it's kind of like a gulliver's travels thing where like there's like this giant michael jackson and they've built like roller coasters around him and stuff and each little scene of the music video uh shows like um images that correspond to like all the tabloid gossip so that was like that was MJ doing his, you know, you know how like Kanye would spaz out on paparazzi like in 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 real life like Michael Jackson always did that in the music and that was like his spaz out song. That's so amazing. that that and that that video was great. Yeah, it's also the time where editing like that would take a long time too. Yeah, yeah, it was really clear. Yeah, when you saw that, I was like, okay, some work, some work went into this because there's a lot of like experimental stuff that they do with it. That, that's what I appreciated about Michael's stuff, though, because he was even at that time in a time when everyone is making like very commercial versions of videos like he was making them super far out, which is really brave to do because music videos were like a young thing at the time. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he kind of came out the gate making basically like art films is, is a huge thing. How long does the average video you make take to create? Uh, about a work week, about like 40 hours. Really? Uh, yeah, uh, because I got to research and I got to write and I got to, and I got to experiment. I experiment a lot yeah, I with. See, I, say, I see like a lot of your videos that have like a certain theme for a certain effects that you have and you, you just play that effect throughout the video and it sort of changes with each video you do. Yes. Yeah. I Drive always try to find the, oh, I appreciate that. I always try to find the the vibe that really like just makes sense for that specific video. Mm. And now I'm, I'm figuring out ways to make it look, you know, more consistent across videos, but I'm still very much like, I want this video to have its own identity. Yeah. Uh, so that when you watch it, you know, like, Oh yeah, this is that video. Because if I just had everything like, you know, swipe up the same way or fade in the same way every time, it's, it's just going to feel like boring at a certain point. I think that's great. Keep that. Like, that's for. Because you gotta think about every artist, every topic you're covering has its own context, right? Mm. And you fit the context with a certain effect, with a certain color scheme, with a certain. Uh, I don't know, however you do it. So I would highly encourage that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. Oh, I appreciate that. Last thing hip hop mm-hmm. culture. It do, it do, hip hop yes. dominates our culture, right? It's arguably the biggest. Yes influence one of the biggest influences in western culture how do you see it evolving in our lifetime yeah that's a that's really interesting i I do think about that often when i see the fact that you know hip-hop continues to be uh continues to grow and it's in in its influence internationally i think what's gonna happen is i think i think we're gonna have like a wonderful peak time like now that it has officially like numbers wise crossed into worldwide mainstream i think we're gonna have probably maybe 10 years of like just wonderful celebration of hip-hop culture and then i think at a certain point it's gonna go pretty stale and you know we're gonna have some subgenre, you know that starts brewing and uh you know bring something new and it may be it may be rap based or it may not be uh but i i think I think it's reaching its uh, it's kind of I think hip hop is reaching its actual golden age. Yeah. You know cuz people people act like the golden age was when it started but it's like yeah but I don't know if you can call it the golden age when it wasn't 
moving the whole world yeah, the yet. The world wasn't moving at the stages of like the biggies and like the NAS. Right now, the whole world is watching. Exactly. So I, I really feel like today we're in our golden age, especially mm. to have a time like today and still have a Kendrick and the Kanyes and the Drake. Like you're literally everyone, every um, fan base is being represented right now in hip hop, yep. except yeah. for. I do believe that female artists are still marginalized, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully, in the, hopefully in the next ten years, right? Hopefully, it's a, a less sexist um, environment. Hundred percent. So, so that might also, like I said, in the next ten years, that might be a much bigger thing too. Women might be much more prevalent um, in 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 the culture. I think they will. It's not a might; they will be. Yeah, I I definitely hope. I mean, yeah. What's... No, they will. They, they they have a lot. They they you know it's so funny. It's kind of sad when you think about sexism, in general, because it's like, of course they you know everybody has so much to offer, <laughs> you know like right. and like you know and people are like oh like maybe like one day like women will have their chance like women they need to have their chance right now. You know, like they're not, it's not like women are going to like turn into like, they've always been here and always, and they've always been amazing and they've always been smart and have always been educated. Like what is this one day? I mean, I think every day, like with the, with the, the world we live in now and the globalization that's happening around the world, like in a minute, uh, an artist can pop, right? Anybody can pop. Yep. Yep. I, I just think it's in all our hands. Just like you're doing it dozens of hours a week, and we're trying to do it. You know, it's it's all in our hands. Um, yeah. What is what's next? What what's next for you? Like this year, what are you what are you excited about working working on for this year and videos you're producing and content? Um. Yeah. I have, um. I'm kind of rounding out um a lot of the year with with Kanye content just because. It's fun, um, and then I'm, you know, and I'm starting, I'm starting to, you know, go into uh, developing stuff about other artists. Uh, there will also be an offshoot channel that is for comic book fans, so that'll be completely Ooh, different. Big Marvel fan. Oh, awesome! I'm a, hu- I'm a huge DC fan. Talking about I um, fuck with DC. You, you excited for Justice yeah. League, man? Yeah, you know, it's. I, I told my friends, you know, no matter what, I will always go and. Buy a ticket to see a DC movie. Like I movie. really, I really hope I like it. Uh, I actually did really like Batman vs Superman. So, uh, and the extended the extended version, which is a completely different movie. Mm. It's it's a completely different, brand new movie that didn't hit the theaters somehow um, because it has like an extra half hour. So it's 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 not the same movie that it's you a, saw in theaters. I don't know what the people would have missed. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's like it's basically Batman vs Superman is basically a movie that nobody saw, um, and yeah, no, I I love all that stuff and and I grew up on that stuff and uh, you know I I nerd out and I think the internet is a great place to talk about those things. I'm also really into, you know, I'm hoping to maybe possibly being able to throw like noisy images events. That would be great. So we'll see. What does that look There's like a lot though? of like... Like what does what tangibly that event look like for you? I mean, dope parties where people vibe out to the music. <laughs> that's great. You know, just, you know, not but not like not like the party where like the creepy dude comes in trying to hit on a bunch of chicks. Like, no, like it's all vibes. Like that would be dope. <laughs> uh, I love that. Yeah, keep going. What else? Uh... No, and it would just look dope, and it would just be like it would be like the most like beautiful looking party you ever walked in on. You would think like you would have to look out and be like, "Am I in a party?" It would be dope. <laughs> but anyway, but anyways, like that's that stuff I'm just talking about with with friends, and we'll see how that works out. But no, I have my hands on a lot of things, making music. Um, What's your you know name? working on? Hmm. What's your producer name? I don't have. I don't. I don't, you know, honestly, I just release stuff under noisy images right now. Huh. Um, guess, yeah, I guess because it's what yeah. the people know the most by. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I just kind of, yeah, like where it's at and hoping to get into the clothing world. So I'm working on a lot of things. I'm juggling a lot of stuff. It's really good to see you just, like, passionate about so many things. Instead of just focusing, eye-holing on one, like, you just, you just really just want to do everything. I feel like that's where a lot of the Kanye comes in as well because he just constantly wants to do so much as well. Yeah, and I was always that kid. Like I was always the kid who wanted to do any and everything and believe that I could do every single thing. And 
you know, and the, and I always look back and anytime someone says, oh, I can't do it, it's like, I did it. Like I said, I was going to go work in Hollywood and I grew up and I worked in Hollywood and I said I was going to, you know, work at a certain company and I ended up working at, like, that's just what I do. I'm actually a little surprised I didn't hear you say a lot more about Donald Glover because Donald Glover represents a lot of that as well with what he does. Oh, yeah. No, Donald Glover's a genius. You know, the funny thing about Donald Glover is he somehow is still kind of understated, like intentionally. You know what I mean? Like everyone knows, like Redbone is amazing. Atlanta is amazing. Like all this stuff is great. And at the same time, he's just kind of like this quiet dude, you know, and it's it's great because it's not a bunch of hoopla and stuff. He's literally just letting the art speak for itself. And it's cool. You know, it's, it's, sometimes you get someone like Kanye who can't stop talking about it, and it's a great thing to listen to. And then sometimes you get people like Frank Ocean or Donald Glover where they're just like come out with stuff, and it's like, yeah, just listen to it. Do you think you can be successful? Like, I just looked up a term that I was trying to remember: Renaissance man. People like Da Vinci, who were a polymath and and skilled in multiple different crafts. Do you believe that you can uh, still be successful in these multiple different endeavors at once? How do you interact with that? Yeah, no, I I really think you can. I, I, I think, though, that you have to do it in a way that fits you and is true to you because if you try to – sometimes people try to follow models, you know, and it's like I do this, 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 and this like, you know, um, let's say if it's movies. You do it like Steven Spielberg. You do it like this. And sometimes, sometimes people create like blueprints for themselves that limit themselves. You know, you have someone like, you know, someone that is really great and someone that I looked up to when I was younger, Howard Hughes, um, you know, he 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 grew up and he's like, I'm going to be a movie director. And he became a movie director. And he's like, I'm going to make the biggest, most expensive movie. And he did it with airplanes. And then he's like, I like these airplanes. I want to f- be a pilot. And he became a pilot. Then he was like, I want to own an airline. And he did that. And then somehow he ended up owning some company that invented cable television. And then he died a <laughs> terrible death. But the point is that he never limited himself. He never decided, like, when he did something, it was never like, yeah, I'm, I'm just a movie director. And the funny part about it, you know, it really, it really goes to show, like, how genius is not appreciated because people made fun of him back then, too. And they thought he was crazy then, too. I mean, he had mental disorders. But, you know, he... He, you know, kind of reminds me of Kanye, too, where they're just like, he's crazy, he's crazy, he's crazy. But at the same time, they're making so much dopeness. And then Howard Hughes is dead. But, like, we remember Howard Hughes because the world, transportation, all this stuff changed because of that dude. The dude who who started out as the kid who wanted to make movies. So Elon Elon Musk co-founded PayPal. Right. And then, (laughs) you know, so. And now look. And now look at that, you know, so there is a, there is a lot of wonderful, um, oh, hold on, sorry. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of wonderful things that can come from, you know, not allowing yourself to be limited uh, by one thing and just do whatever you want. When we were kids, you were drawing one day, and then the next day you were doing something else, and then, you know, we are turn on the TV and you're watching cartoons and suddenly you don't want to do that anymore. And some people be like, oh, that's ADD and blah, blah, blah. But you can harness that to create. Right. You know, and, and that's really, that's where the hard part comes in. It's how do you harness all the craziness into something focused? And how do you? How have you learned to do that? Um, to not be afraid to, to just put stuff down. And not be too much of a perfectionist because when you overthink it, it'll just never get done, you know. And so I'm not afraid, you know. I'm if I write a draft of something, I just have to remind myself like no one's looking over my shoulder. It could be the stupidest, most like not like non logical thing ever. It doesn't matter. It's just me. And then I just keep working on it, working. And then of course I know I'm not going to release it until it's good. So. You know, I got so used to, though, like looking at a blank page and just being like, oh, I have to wait till I'm inspired. Or, oh, I just like I don't think I have the right ideas. Like I, now I just walk up. It's like, Don, you just you just got to do it. <laughs> just do it. And then and then something will come out and then it'll start out. And like the first two paragraphs are like terrible and don't make sense. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, that's kind of, OK. That's a good thought. And then before you know, it, you've written the whole thing. So. What's a, what's you just a, gotta kind of you gotta let yourself break through. What's a video that you've been fearful of of putting out there, or, or rather hesitant? Mm, Is there one? 
There was one the the one the recent one where I d- did Jay Z and Kanye, the throne. Uh, watch the throne. That one I was scared to release that one. Uh, and yeah, that one was probably the most challenging one to figure out how to get right and release it without you know with while still coming across as like making sense right. and like not trying to like frame it as some sort you know because that like it could have gone if i wasn't careful and i just slapped it together it could come across as like one of those like conspiracy theorist youtubers where they're just like yelling at the sky and like and i was like no 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 like it's it's way more focused than that and that was a little hard to like make it focused and then and then once you've been editing for like 40 hours i'm like i this may be terrible <laughs> You know, just like because I've listened to it twenty times, of course it sounds great to me. But like, I don't, you know. And then thankfully, when I put it up and saw that people were reacting well, I was like, okay, you know. So sometimes it is hard. Like, I mean, it's not that I care so much about what people think. I don't really. It's just much. I do care what I think, and and I want it to be great. And there are moments when you just kind of are playing with the clay to the point where you're like, I don't even know if I can make anything out of this. And then and then you show it to somebody and they're like, "That's amazing," and you're like, "Really? Okay." <laughs> How many of those blank canvases get thrown out? Oh, almost none. Uh, like in terms of like overall projects, like I've never trashed a project. Yeah, like ideas, like, "Oh no, I'm done with this. This ain't, this ain't gonna work." Uh, no, no. Thankfully, I've never had to do that. Um, I mean, I've definitely rewritten things from the ground up, but never had to like be like, "I'm not gonna talk about this." Um, because, you know, I always try to keep in mind, like, okay, there are some thoughts that are for just me or like one person that I'm talking to Mm -hmm. and there are certain, and, and they don't translate to, you know, 60,000 people watching on YouTube. So I have to know that ahead of time. And I do know that ahead of time. So I always want to make sure that at the end of the day, regardless of what facts or anything that I showed somebody through a video, I want them to know like, Hey, this is me talking to you guys, you know? As opposed to just me. This isn't just me rambling to myself, you know. Is this what you're trying to live off, though? Like, is it the goal to maybe one day generate a sustainable amount of income for from noisy images? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's starting to get there. You know, I've gotten a uh, shout-out to Squarespace for sponsoring me uh, in the in the previous videos that I released over the past month. Yeah. Um, you know, there's other things in the works, thankfully, that, you know, do allow me to to uh survive and you know not have to worry about stopping doing this so that's great um and i think i do project in the next six months or so for this to be a full-time thing like it in it, it, in some ways it, it's it, in right now it's a part-time thing yeah. for sure but i think uh it will become a full-time thing in the near future i believe man exciting times ahead yeah thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry if I talked your ear off. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure, Don. It's really good to hear your perspective and everything. Yeah, exactly. I like oh, covered yes. everything you needed wanted to cover, so thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I would like to, I would like to plug my channel. It's Noisy Images at YouTube and then at Noisy Images as one word on Twitter and Instagram. And most of, like, if you want to stay up to date on things that are not videos... I'm on Twitter all the time, so. All right, man. Yeah. We know it's late. We'll let you go and get some sleep. Again, thank you so much. If there's anything you, you we can ever do for you, um, please let us know. And yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And I appreciate what appreciate what you guys are doing. No problem, man. All right. All love, Don. Right. Thank you very uh, much, man. Away. See you, brother. No problem. See you. What a great man. Great man. Talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's passionate. Oh, no, no, that's the thing, man. That's good. We've got a lot to work with.